What's going on guys? Welcome back to my greenhouse here at Rise and Shine Farm. My name is Heather. I am a potting my tomatoes today. Um, they are starting to run out of room so it's time to up pot them into a, their own pots. So I figured I would take you along and kind of show you how I do that. These are kind of the ones that I've already started separating. This video is going to be actually multiple things today. I'm going to kind of, while I'm, while I'm doing this, I'm going to go over our um, first farrowing experience. Miss Paisley, if you've been following along on our Instagram or on our Facebook page, you know that Miss Paisley finally had her babies and it was pretty eventful to say the least. It was not, not at all what we were expecting, which is probably what I should have expected in terms of the farm life. You know, there's, you have good days and you have bad days. So in, in terms of just up potting my tomato plants here, so as you can see, um, I kind of do in one little pot here, I have quite a few. This is a San Marzano tomato plant. It's an heirloom. I use these as like my paste tomatoes. So what I do is I will just take the tag and stick it in, in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very gently and very lightly kind of pull some of these plants out, trying to get as much of the roots as possible. I'm just going to dig a little well, this way, and I'm going to put it in here. And you're going to notice that I bury my tomato plants pretty deeply. So you can see here how much, like, here's, here's the end of it. I'm going to bury that pretty deeply. And I do that because if you've ever looked at a tomato plant closely, you'll notice that it has little tiny hairs that kind of go up the stem. And what those are, are potential roots. Um, so a tomato plant, if left to its own, to its own will, a tomato plant will actually vine. And anywhere that the, the stem, anywhere that this stem kind of touches the ground, it will develop a root system. So I plant my tomato plants nice and deep to just try and get a, get a little bit more root growth and get a healthier plant overall. Um, so these two are kind of like little stragglers. I'm just gonna, I don't like to do this, but I'm going to do it. I'm just gonna break those off and just leave that and I'll switch this pot out and keep going. And that's how I separate my tomatoes. So let's get into this farrowing story. So just a little background story. We have uh, Gloucestershire Old Spots. Uh, we have a, ble a breeding trio. We have two females and a male. Their names are Tennessee and, P and Paisley are our females. And then we have Johnny Cash, who is our boar. Um, so back like right around Thanksgiving, I saw Johnny Cash and Paisley, um, you know, having, making some babies. We'll put it that way. Um, so by the farrowing calendar, which um, if you don't know, pigs are usually pregnant for three months, three weeks, and three days, roughly 114 days. Um, it can be longer than that, it can be shorter than that, but it's typically not any longer than 120 days from what I'm reading anyway. So we figured out that Paisley was in fact expecting a litter. Um, as she kind of got closer and started progressing in her pregnancy, you could see her milk line starting to come in. And right around that time is when we decided, okay, we're getting close. Let's um, go ahead and try and move her into the farrowing pen. Um, so that's, it, it's just a barn stall that we had, that we had saved for her to, to feel safe and have her babies away from everybody else in the, in the pig pen because I just wanted her to feel as safe and as comfortable as possible um, and, and eliminate any kind of tragedy that may or may not have happened if she had stayed in the um, in the regular pig run. So we get her in the farrowing hut where you know we're gonna have her have her babies. It was a Saturday um, so we got her in there and she was due um, she was due technically by that three month three week and three day period she should have been due around March the 17th. So March 17th kind of comes and goes. She's not producing any milk. Um, so I'm not like, I'm not too concerned at, at that point thinking like, okay, well, you know, there could have been, you know, wait time depending on when exactly, you know, she settled with her, her pigs. I'm just going to give her a little bit more time. Well, I think it was, and I can insert some of the footage here because I'm telling you guys, like when I say I think that she was in labor for a few days, 
I think that she was either either in labor or like in the pre-stages of labor. I'm not really sure, but there was one day in particular and it was about, so it was a Sunday night. So a week had passed at this point since we had put her in the farrowing, farrowing pen. And, um, you know, she could just, and I can insert this footage here because I thought for sure that that was gonna be the day. There she is. And she's just laying there. Contractions are coming and they're coming hard. It's it's gotta be just a matter of time now. Um, you know, she was breathing really heavy, and her her breathing rate had actually increased. She had started like just the little tiniest bit of milk I was able to extract from her that Sunday morning, and um, you know, I thought for sure we were gonna wake up on you know on Monday morning and, and we were gonna have some piglets. Well, that didn't happen. Monday came and, and went and she was acting all day Monday. She acted completely fine. Her, she didn't have any labored breathing. She was eating. She didn't have any discharge coming from her. Um, still just like the little, littlest, tiniest bit of milk and it was only coming from a teat or two. Nothing happened on Monday. Tuesday, we wake up and she had built the nest. She started having more milk coming from more teats. Um, again, that, that labor breathing started. So I was thinking, okay, you know, I was in a meeting on Tuesday at work and Ben, my husband texted me and had, had sent me a video of her, like, you know, starting to grunt. She was kicking her back leg. Um, you know, all signs again, that she was in labor. She was having contractions, but she never progressed, you know, and then he decided to give her some food to see what would happen. And as soon as he gave her food, she got right up and started eating. Looking back, I mean, I think even in the moment I had said to him, stop feeding her. She needs to focus on her labor. She's clearly in labor. Something is happening right now. Like, leave her alone. The rest of the day on Tuesday, she was still kind of grunting. She was kicking her legs. And again, I'm thinking to myself like, okay, this has got to be it. Like, she's got to have them tonight. So that night, similar to how I had been for the last, I don't know, three or four days at this point, I'm up every, every two hours going out and checking on her to see if, see if there are piglets yet and see if she's in labor and you know, if she's going to need my help, anything and still nothing. Um, so again, I woke up on, um, woke up on Wednesday morning, still no piglets. She's still clearly in labor. We went in to, to again, she, she didn't have any discharge, but at this point her milk was actually spraying out. So I knew based on the things that I had read and, and other people that I've kind of like, that I follow on YouTube, you know, they had, had said like, if you are getting milk that's actually squirting out, you're within six hours of farrowing. So, you know, at this point I tell Ben like, look, if she doesn't have piglets by tonight, we're calling, we're calling the vet because something is wrong. So naturally, I had another meeting. I had a, had a meeting that afternoon. So I went in, and of course, while I'm in that meeting, Ben texts me and says, "She's in labor. She's having piglets. Um, I need help." And of course, I'm in an in-person meeting. My phone is not. My phone is in my bag because I'm not thinking. I just wasn't thinking at the time. I don't. It's another one of those things that if I could go back and and do it again, I, I would have I would have had my phone on me so that I could get home to help him. So by the time that I realized that she's having piglets, it had already been about 45 minutes since he started calling me. Um, so at that point, he said he had texted me that. She had one piglet and it was still in the, the amniotic sac that the sac had never broken. So that one, he, and he couldn't get it open, um, for whatever reason. So, you know, that one unfortunately had passed. Um, so I am like speeding home. I'm flying home. I come, I finally get home and I realize, and he is, he is actually going in and trying to, trying to pull piglets because he, 
it had, at, again, at that point, it had been an hour since she delivered that first piglet. Um, so he's, you know, naturally he's freaking out. I'm not home. I totally understand, you know, where he's coming from. I come home. He is, you know, in this pig. He's like, I'm not, I don't feel anything, but she hasn't, she hasn't passed the piglet in over an hour. So at this point, I'm calling my pig mentor and kind of asking her, like, you know, what what is happening? I don't know what to do. I'm panicking because again, this is this is everybody's first time. I had no idea. Had no idea. Um, you know, naturally, everything that I had read online and and all the you know everybody that I, every video that I've watched, every I thought that I was prepared. Honest, honestly, I thought that I was prepared for anything to happen, including needing to go in and pull piglets. But you know. Nothing beats hands-on experience. You can read and you can watch all of the videos that you want to, but in reality, you're, you're never going to be fully prepared until you actually do it. And we learned that lesson for sure this, this go around. So I call my pig mentor and I'm like, look, you know, I tell her what's going on, that she hasn't passed the piglet. And then as I'm on the phone with her, Paisley gets up. And I'm stressing that, you know, don't get up, you know, please just don't move around. And, and the pig, my pig mentor just kind of said, you know, let her move because what she's trying, what she's probably trying to do is get herself in a, in a, in a better situation so that she can get this piglet out. So we get her, we get her moving, we get, you know, she gets up and she gets, she moves. And no sooner does she do that, she lays back down and maybe three or four minutes later, here comes that second piglet. Unfortunately, that second piglet, I did everything that I could to try and revive it, um, but it, it came out, it was not breathing. Um, I tried chest compressions, I did mouth, I did mouth to mouth on this piglet, guys. I did mouth to mouth on this piglet, and there wasn't anything that I could do. Um, so the second piglet had passed. Maybe, I don't know, it was probably about eight minutes later she started pushing again and here comes the third piglet unfortunately same situation that that piglet had also passed in utero and um you know at this point i am and ben too i mean we are completely devastated i thought that we had lost the entire litter i mean when we had three dead piglets i think i, I sat down in the farrowing crate and i started crying and i was just praying to god God, please just, please just let us have one. If, if, if there's just one, one that's alive, please just let us, let us have one. Um, and sure enough, here comes the next piglet again, maybe four or five minutes later and it's alive. And when I tell you our entire moods and mindsets, just in that moment, I don't, I don't think that I have ever been so grateful and thankful guys, I was just so, I was so happy and so excited that we had not, this, this was my sign that you guys didn't completely fail. That was piglet number four. Number four was alive. We got it. It came out. It was kicking and squealing and just making noises. And, um, you know, so we, I got it out and I dried her all off and I put her right on mommy's, on, on mama's teeth. And she started nursing right away. I mean, just right away. She was good to go. Um, so then she Paisley proceeded to have five, six, and seven. So she had four total piglets that were born in the next hour or so. She, she passed four more piglets and they were all alive and all looking really happy and healthy and just great. So then she passed another piglet that um, unfortunately ended up being um, also stillborn. Um, and after that, she passed one of her placentas. So um, I was thinking that, okay, you know, maybe we'll have a couple more, maybe we won't. Um, well, she did end up having, she had one more um, that was again, another, another stillbirth. And um, at that point, again, it had just been such a long labor process um, at this point that I really think that that was, that was one of the major causes. Um, so, yeah, so she had, had a ninth one that was, a, that was stillborn. Um, 
and I was just waiting for her to pass the placenta and then she had one more. Her last one was, she, this one was a little on the small side, um, but she was alive and she's also doing incredibly well. Paisley had a total of five live births um, and five stillbirths. Um, and uh, again, we're still, we're still trying to figure out what exactly happened. Um, I think it was a combination of things. I think it was a combination of her just being so overdue, um, you know, and, and being in labor for so long. Like I said, I, I really do believe that she was in labor, um, for a day, a day and a half, um, trying to, so honestly, I, I feel like, I feel like we're lucky that, that we didn't lose her, um, which is something that I am very, very grateful for. I don't think that I have been so ever so mentally, emotionally, or physically exhausted. I was just beside myself, you know, and I went from, you know, being happy and grateful that we got these five piglets to being like, man, but we, it could have been 10. It could have been 10 if I had intervened when I thought that I needed to, but again, you know, I reached out to our vet. I reached out to, um, other GOS owners just trying to figure out like, do I need to be concerned? What's, what's going on? I'm not, you know, I, I don't know what to do. I'm taking this as a learning experience. That's all you can do. Like I said earlier, you, you, you're never fully prepared for something until you actually go in and get things done. And you're actually given the opportunity to, to have these experiences. So again, like having said that, mama and babies are doing great. And when guys, when I tell you that she is, Paisley is a phenomenal mother. Like I actually witnessed her licking a couple of her piglets and that is not typical of pigs at all she is so gentle with them she will actually I, I've seen her getting up out of her nest when they're kind of climbing all over her and it's time for them to feed I have seen her actually get up out of the nest circle around to corral them out of the nest so that she can lay down without hitting one of them and she is just her mothering instincts. I mean, this is this is one of the reasons, one of the many reasons that we decided on this particular breed. But when I tell you that I was not prepared for how well she was going to be a mother, she is just she's blowing me away with how great she is and that right there I mean, having a good sow is worth their weight in gold as far as I'm concerned. I have never been so, I was worried. I, I didn't know how she was going to be, you know, with being a first time mom. That Wednesday night, Ben and I actually took shifts uh, on um, going outside and staying with the piglets and making sure that they're, they were finding their way back to the creep, that they weren't trying to snuggle with mama to avoid any accidents because we only had five piglets, you know, and I wasn't, after the hard day that we had delivering those dead piglets and trying to revive those piglets that had already died in utero, there, there wasn't anything that I could have done, but I couldn't not try. After having that day, the thought of coming out to a piglet who had been crushed or something worse, I just couldn't, Ben and I both, and not just me, we could not handle it. So we took shifts and Ben stayed out until about 1, 1 and then he came in and got me and I came out and stayed in the barn, in the barn with these pigs from 1 to 5 30 a.m. just to make sure that everything was great and you know luckily everything everything turned out fine I mean knock on wood it's been you know they're on day three and they are just they're thriving and I'm so happy and I just I just can't I, I can't even put into words how good it makes my heart feel that these these five piglets are doing as well as they are and how amazing of a mother Paisley is and I just 
that's all I can ask for at this point. I guess one of the questions that people are going to be asking is, you know, am I going to do this again? And I am because it's worth it to me. You know, yes, we had had a lot of loss, but I think that that was, I think it was a fluke. I, or at least I'm, I, that's what I'm hoping. Um, you know, it was, it was her first time. I'm not really sure that she knew what was going on. And honestly, now that we've had this first experience under our belts, if there's ever a time where I see her kind of doing what she was doing, where she was clearly contracting, but nothing was happening. Um, you know, there are other things that I could have done that I just didn't have in my farrowing kit on me because I <laughs> didn't think I was going to be needing it, but clearly I did. So there are other things that I could help to give her to help make, um, you know, those uterine contractions a little bit stronger to help get those piglets out. You know, and again, I I'm kind of hoping that it was just a fluke thing this was her first time having babies I'm I'm thinking that maybe like maybe her body just didn't know what to do in the future I think what I'm gonna do is have some oxytocin on hand that if there's ever a time where she is clearly in labor and she's not passing piglets I can give her some oxytocin to help those uterine contractions be a little bit stronger to, to start getting those piglets out. Yeah, so that's our farrowing experience. Not what we had hoped for, but also not as tragic as it, it really could have been. So get ready for all of the cute little baby piglet content. Get ready to be completely spammed. If you follow us on Facebook or on Instagram, I have the links to those in our in the description down below. If you wanna see more pig content here on YouTube, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Um, give us some support. I'm really excited for you guys to see, to see how these piglets are growing up. So thank you guys for coming to grow with me. I'll see you guys next time.